Recently, I've been talking quite a bit about emulation on my channel, and today is going to be another one of those days. For those of you who don't know, GPCS4 is a PlayStation 4 emulator currently in development. And in the world of PlayStation 4 emulation, I believe that it's a very, very important piece of software. And today I'm going to explain why I think this. Now, what I'm about to say is old news, but I'm going to say it again just in case y'all don't know. As of a few months ago, GPCS4 is the only PlayStation 4 emulator on Windows to be able to actually load up a PlayStation 4 game and be able to interact with it. The game is called We Are Doomed, and it isn't in a state that's playable, but the fact that this emulator is able to actually boot up a PS4 game at all is huge. As far as I know, one of the other big PS4 emulators, Orbital, I believe is still stuck in the BIOS right now. Once again, I'm going to explain today why this is such a big development. Once again, I know this is old news, but I want to throw my hat in the ring and tell you all exactly why I think this emulator and this breakthrough is such a big deal in the world of emulation. Now, before I go any further and talk more about GPCS4, I want to mention Spine. Spine is another PlayStation 4 emulator available only on Linux that apparently, supposedly, is able to run somewhere between 20 and 50 games currently. They're not playable, but they can run. And this is super huge. And I know, based on the title and what I said so far, some people are going to wonder why I'm talking about GPCS4 and why I think GPCS4 is so important and not Spine, because Spine is obviously making huge progress, more so than GPCS4. So why isn't this video talking about Spine? Well, I want you all to understand that I do think that Spine is also a very important emulator, I do believe this. Also, I've never claimed that GPCS4 is the only important PS4 emulator, but the reason why I'm talking about GPCS4 and not Spine is because Spine is closed source and exclusive to Linux, being developed, as far as I know, completely solo by one person. Now look, the developer of Spine has every right to do whatever they want with the software. They can feel free to make their emulator as close source and as exclusive as they want. That's their choice, they can make that choice. But the problem is, by doing so, by making the emulator exclusive to an operating system that not very many people use, Spine has really not garnered very much attention. This, this isn't a community project. If you look up anything about PS4 emulation, Spine is hardly mentioned at all. It certainly isn't gaining traction on YouTube. I mean, that's not to say there isn't any news about it at all, but it's, there's not really any buzz around it for the most part. The developer also doesn't seem to be super chatty, and although Spine has generated a couple of pretty popular Reddit posts, the developer hasn't really done anything with his attention. They haven't really done anything to keep the momentum going. And the reason why this is important and this is something I'll discuss in more detail in this video, is that attention is super, super important to the success of an emulator, especially for a new one. If the emulator is only on Linux, and nobody's talking about it, not many people are using it, it's not going to be super popular. The more accessible an emulator is, the more people flock to it, and the more people there's going to be that are willing to generate news about it, and help develop it, and work out bugs, and it's really the community behind an emulator that helps make it thrive and helps make it make progress. Without a community behind it, Spine isn't really making any waves. But the thing is, GPCS4 has garnered a ton of attention. And even though the GitHub page says that this project is, quote, for learning 3D graphics and they don't intend for it to become a serious application, there are people doing serious development on this emulator. All it takes is a quick look in their Discord to see that this is true. I don't think this is really just like a casual experiment anymore. I think people are starting to take this thing seriously. So because of this, GPCS4 is the emulator that's been in the spotlight. And I'm going to talk about its importance because once again, it, it may not have gotten quite as far as Spine has, but there's certainly a lot more buzz around it, and if anything, it looks a little bit more promising. Now we're going to get into GPCS4 itself. So for any of you that follow emulation, you'll know that progress in the world of emulation can be kind of sporadic. Sometimes it can take months or even years to get glitches and performance problems to be ironed out in specific games, 
while other times, a game that previously was very hard to run can suddenly have breakthroughs and patches and become much more playable and stable. I'd say a decent example of this would be The Last of Us on our PCS3. A few months ago, the game had many, many problems, both performance and graphical. And while, okay, the game still isn't totally stable, it's definitely not there yet, there has been huge progress on the game over the last month or two, and it's getting much better and better faster than it was before, due mostly to the community behind it. And like I said, the community is a big part of this. I mention all of this because it's clear to me that PS4 emulation, and especially GPCS4, is something that's really starting to pick up a good amount of traction. This in-game breakthrough has generated a decent amount of buzz and has given the emulator some much needed attention. And look, now I'm a pretty lousy coder and not really a developer myself of software, but even I can tell you that having more people working on a community project is better. And as PS4 emulation gathers more hype and more attention, the community of coders and developers and programmers is going to actively grow. And once again, just by looking at the GPCS4 Discord, I can tell you there are already people invested in this. What I'm trying to say is that while We Are Doomed is obviously not playable yet, we're probably years away from GPCS4 having many playable games, or really any other emulator for that matter, and Spine apparently has done a lot of this stuff too, the fact that GPCS4 has gotten attention for being able to run even one game is a big breakthrough because it means that PS4 emulation, it finally has some hope. It finally seems to be getting somewhere. There's finally some tangible emulator that can give us hope for PS4 emulation. There's something we can point at and say, yes, this is progress. We're, we're making breakthroughs. We're getting there. It's a long road, but we're taking steps, you know? When Spine came out, by comparison, people thought it was fake because the developer gave zero info beyond a single YouTube video. That's, that's all there was. But the thing is, GPCS4 has more of an actual community behind it. It's, it's getting the attention of people that are into emulation. And this is only the beginning. Things are only going to get better from here. Because as GPCS4 gains a following, PS4 emulation as a whole is going to get more awareness, and it might even help other PS4 emulators like Orbital, or perhaps even the previously mentioned Spine, which are also in development. In a lot of ways, this is kind of like putting the first human in space, or I guess the second human in space. By itself, it, it doesn't really mean much. What can a lone person do in space? I mean, nothing useful. They're just going to be floating around up there. But it represents progress. It represents a major breakthrough in the space race to the stars. It's going to take some time, but the ball is really rolling now. We're launching those rockets. We're going to get a man on the moon, and it's going to take some years, but it's going to happen. Another reason why GPCS4 and, honestly, other PS4 emulators as well are so important is because the PS4 is the most powerful console to date that has ever been emulated. Nothing else comes close in power, not even the Switch. GPCS4 and other emulators are obviously in very early stages currently, but this shows that emulating more powerful consoles is not impossible. In fact, it's starting to become a reality. Once again, we're at the very infantile stages here. This is just the beginning. But the fact that a game can boot up at all is amazing when you consider how much more powerful the PS4 is compared to previous gen consoles or even the Switch. And hell, the PS5 isn't even out yet. We're already starting to emulate a current gen console. I mean, granted, it's not going to be current gen for much longer, but still, as of today, it is. We've never dealt with a console this capable before. GPCS4 is doing a lot to help pave the way for the future of emulation. And also, you know, like I said before, Spine is also doing this too, and apparently it's it's made a lot of progress, but the point still stands. The accomplishments of GPCS4 are still very valid because, once again, it's the only emulator currently in-game on Windows, and that isn't completely closed source. Finally, I know I mentioned this before, I know y'all are probably wondering why I keep talking about this, I have nothing against Spine. Okay, but look, Spine, it seems like a great project, and the fact that it's in-game in almost 50 games is pretty impressive. But the fact that it's closed source only on Linux 
and the developer apparently doesn't plan on putting out a new build until the PS5 is out, Spine has no community behind it. And I feel like it's it's a bit of a shame because it's obviously making great progress. It's obviously a good piece of software. But I can't help but feel like it's being wasted by just being a, a closed source solo project. And that is also a big part of why GPCS4 is so very important. It's made the news. It's bringing more attention to PS4 emulators, including itself and ones like Orbital. So in conclusion, yes, the PS4 is a powerful console. It's going to take a lot of time to properly code and optimize for it to the point where it's an emulator where you can actually sit down and play games on it. Yes, GPCS4 is currently a very rough program that isn't very easy to set up. And yes, on the GitHub page, the dev claims it isn't a serious progress. But there's actually people working on this emulator. And it's garnered a lot of attention. It's gonna get better. There's gonna be more games that are slowly going to be able to be loaded. I mean, it's gonna take years, surely. But these things take time. Emulation is always a work in progress. And just like the consoles before it, the PS4 will be emulated. And GPCS4 is so important because it's it's helping to put PS4 emulation on the map. It's paving the way for itself and other emulators like Orbital to be successful in the future. It's giving us something as a community to point at and go, look, they're making progress. I can see what they're doing. I can see what they're doing in the Discord. I can see what they're doing on GitHub. I can see the progress this emulator is making, and even if it's just little progress, it's exciting. I think PS4 emulation has a very good future ahead of it, and GPCS4 is doing a lot, in my opinion, to help this. Ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty much all I have today. I really just wanted to talk about the reasons why I thought GPCS4 was very important in emulation. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. And if you want to see more videos about classic video games and about emulation, make sure to subscribe.